What is the curse of the ninth? Well, the curse supposes that composers who write a ninth symphony are doomed shortly thereafter to become famous decomposers. Now, I had always thought the idea that you die after composing your ninth symphony was superstitious twaddle. So I was more than a little surprised to discover there's a kernel of truth to the myth. The curse, of course, starts with Beethoven, who famously wrote nine symphonies and then died. But then, the other composers started racking up the list. Franz Schubert, who died before he could finish his tenth. Spohr, also only wrote nine symphonies. Anton Bruckner completed his ninth symphony in 1896, and then, shock, he died before he could finish his tenth. Dvorak also only made it to nine before Kaput. Gustav Mahler completed his ninth symphony in 1909 and died two years later before he could complete his tenth. Rafe Vaughan Williams also only writes nine symphonies, so he takes up a tenth to break the curse and dies. Alfred Schnicker completed his ninth symphony in 1996 and died a couple of years later, leaving an uncompleted tenth. Sibelius apparently said starting work on a ninth symphony would tempt fate and didn't even complete his eighth. Oh, and the Beatles also only completed nine albums before coming up with their famous number nine, number nine, nine. on the White Album that would announce the death of the band. All of which meant Philip Glass wrote his tenth symphony before composing his ninth just to avoid the curse. The composer Schoenberg said, It seems that the ninth is a limit for every composer. He who wants to go beyond it must pass away. It seems as if something might be imparted to us in the tenth, which we ought not yet to know for which we are not ready. That's quite a list and quite a quote, but first of all, a bit of debunking is in order. Spohr actually wrote 10 symphonies, Bruckner only really completed 8 symphonies, his ninth isn't completed, so the myth falls down there as well. Schubert again has an unfinished ninth, and then he dies, but Dvorak completes 9 symphonies, and then lives another dozen years more. And Sibelius didn't even get to 8 symphonies, so I don't even know what he's doing here. And, by the way, the Beatles completed albums 10 and 11 before their demise. And, just to dot our I's and cross our T's, Schoenberg also said, The idea of the curse of the ninth is nothing but a superstition. It is a myth that has been perpetuated by the media and by people who are looking for patterns where none exist. Which brings us neatly to apophenia, that process that humans are particularly good at, where we can detect patterns where none actually exist. And, I should point out, it also comes down to our fingers and thumbs, of which we have ten, so we count in tens, which means we reset our number system after the number nine, which gives that number an apparent changing level significance, which actually only relates to counting on our fingers. However, there are some cases where the curse of the Ninth Symphony has actually affected a composer's behaviour. It seems, for example, Philip Glass really did release his tenth symphony before a ninth, to counter the myth. As he told one interviewer, I wrote my 10th symphony first because I was always afraid to write a 9th symphony. You know, people die after the 9th symphony, and I thought I would just avoid that whole problem. Fair enough. Mahler is an even better example. The composer was a deeply superstitious man who was genuinely worried the curse might exert power. He claimed to be unaffected. In a letter to friend and colleague Bruno Volta, Mahler wrote, the Tenth Symphony does not present a problem for me. I have already surpassed Beethoven and Bruckner in terms of symphonic scope. Why should I be afraid of the number nine? But he was. A highly neurotic man, Mahler was fastidious in a way we would probably now label OCD. He was also scared of the number nine. Every day, he counted the steps between his hotel and work at the Vienna Court Opera to be exactly 100 steps. When there were 99 steps, he would apparently be very unhappy. So, when time came to compose what was going to be his ninth symphony, he instead named the work Das Lied von der Erde. That meant that when he wrote his ninth symphony, he was actually writing his tenth, and thus he believed he had escaped the curse. So, having kissed the devil goodnight, the fate-free Mahler goes on to write his tenth, and, irony announcement, keels over dead. Thus, in attempting to escape the myth, Mahler may have inadvertently made it more pervasive still. Such is the fate of those that believe in curses. Please like and subscribe.